This video will look at using the group by to view customized files for an application by uh, the class. So I'm in ServiceNow and one of the things I like to look at uh, if I'm using a store application for example that I've customized is I go to the application record and down here we have a list of customized files. So these are the files that I've modified uh, from the out-of-the-box version. So this is a super useful list to look at uh, to get an idea of you know, what I and my colleagues have, uh, have done. Uh, but being a related list, one of the problems is you can't group by the class. It would be interesting to view it by class, so I had like field labels, so I don't care about that but uh, something like script includes, maybe that's something I'd pay more attention to. Um, so in order to get this uh, list uh, in a format where I can do a group by, I have to go to the table directly. So this is coming from the sys metadata table. Uh, if we do that, let's head over to here and go sys uh, metadata.list. Oops. Okay, I go here, and when I was originally looking at this, I figured, well, let me just find the, uh, you know, customized file uh, column, and that must say true, and then we're up and running. So I go through here, and, hmm, not a whole lot of columns going on here. Uh, and I've tried a few things, and nothing sort of worked in terms of getting it the, uh, just, the just the customized files to appear. Uh, so... I did a little digging around, and if we look at the relationship for that uh, related list, and that's called customized files. So here's the relationship definition. And we look at the query width, and you see it gives you a list, this line 8 here. It calls this uh, class. App customization, app customization API, get app customization files, and it gives you the app scope ID, which is in most cases, if it's a store app, it's the um, sys ID of the of the application record where we were on before. Uh, so I think this is a Java class because I can't find any trace of it uh, anywhere in the script includes. Um, so basically, this returns a list of file names that have been modified. And in this add query, it looks at uh, sysupdate name is in uh, modified files, right? Because this thing returns a, an array of modified files. And the sysupdate name is just uh, the list of files. So if we go back to our sys metadata table, uh, we can see the update name. And it's kind of blank for these first ones. Here we go. So... Here's the workflow and then the, the sys ID of that. Uh, but basically, it's the file name uh, with the sys ID next to it. Um, so what we want to do is be able to uh, return a list of, I only want the files in the, uh, where am I going here? Oh, down here. I'm switching between UI16 and uh, Polaris, and I always get confused as to where to find stuff. So 528,000 records here, and I just want the human resources core records uh, that have been customized. Um, so I can't use that directly in a... Uh, I need to use a scripted filter uh, is what it comes down to. So I go over to uh, script includes... Actually, why don't we do this with the and I have the script include get customized file sys IDs. Um, so I should have mentioned this in the beginning. In on my site, I have uh, all of the instructions laid out as to what you have to do, and the code for this script include is in here. So I created this 
uh, script include. This is a classless uh, script include. So it's just a function in here. You should make it client callable and make it accessible from all application scopes. Put it in the global scope. And what this is doing is it is um, it takes an application sys ID as a parameter. That's uh, if I were to go to the record for that application here. That's the sys ID there. Uh, but if I don't supply a, an application sys ID, it will just take the uh, sys ID, or it'll take the sys ID of the application that is currently selected as the scope. Uh, and then I set up an array here, uh, empty array, and then I go through the list, and I go get the sys IDs of uh, whatever is returned by this uh, class that we looked at earlier. Here, it's going all the way down here. So it's saying, hey, go find me all the application file names that are customized uh, for this application, and then push back the array of, uh, of sys IDs. So now I have this set up. I can go back to my application, uh, uh, sys metadata table, and here I go into here, and I go sys ID. is, and I go JavaScript, uh, I think I even had it pasted right, I just put the, yeah, did it twice there, uh, so I just put my function in there, okay, customize file sys IDs, I run that, and we're ready to go. Uh, so this gives me my 50 files. This is what we saw back when we went into the application record. Here we can just do that for fun. Go back here. I'm showing 50 files that are customized. So here, showing me those same 50 files. And now I can go in and do a group by class. And there we go. So I can see, okay, well, record producer, yeah, of course, that's fine. Uh, you know, some things are more important than others, and you can kind of make those assessments more easily when you can group by. Uh, if you have, like, thousands of files, I had one application with, like, 5,800 files modified, and uh, the instance wasn't happy when I did the group by. It timed out. It's probably some way to get that working better, but uh, I... I didn't mess too much with it. So basically, bottom line is if you have too many files, you might uh, run into some problems doing the, the group by. Uh, now, while we're doing this, and I just want to test because maybe there's even an easier way to do this. What if we just um, used that? Let's go back to the... Um, where was that? That was in the relationship. I have it in the script include as well. Um, so what if we did this? And we did this directly in the, and we did it by the sysupdate name. And that might actually work. So maybe we don't have to actually create the script include. Let's do that. And I'm going to just fire up a... Notepad there, and let's get the sys ID of this. Oops. Okay, and now we shall go back to metadata and because it's a string I'm not a hundred percent sure it's gonna work but worth a try so update name is oops so we'll call that thing mm, yeah it doesn't work because uh, probably because that is a Java class and not a script include, so you can't call that uh, from here. 
you can only uh, call that in a script include and then call the script include from uh, from here. So um, so that's how to do it. That's how to uh, take a look at all of your customized files for an application by class.